So as we continue on with our study of ecosystems, let's look now at the roles within an ecosystem, roles and relationships that organisms have. An ecosystem is really just a complex network of interactions, different organisms, different populations interacting with each other. Now, all organisms to survive must take in food, water, and nutrients. And remember, organism is something that's living. They all require food, water, and nutrients. Now, how they get their food, water, and nutrients depends on the type of organism. Now, the nutrients are the elements that allow the organism to grow and live. And whenever we're talking about organisms, think about humans, think about ourselves. We need nutrients to grow, to live, to get bigger, to get stronger. Now, when we're talking about organisms, things that are living, we can categorize them into three different categories. And they're either going to be a producer, a consumer, or a decomposer in the ecosystem. One of those three roles within the ecosystem. And we're going to look at those roles in a little more detail here. So let's first start with a producer. Now, a producer sometimes goes by another word, a more formal word called an autotroph. Producer, autotroph, just means the same thing. Now, a producer is a type of organism that can make their own food. Now, we're not talking like you can go into your kitchen and make your own food. We're talking an organism is equipped to make its own food, usually by photosynthesis using energy from the sun. So if you think about photosynthesis and the types of species that do photosynthesis, what we're talking about is a plants. Plants, or if we're looking at a water ecosystem, algae, phytoplankton, these organisms that can create their own food using energy from the sun, we call them producers. If an organism is not a producer, what it may actually be is a consumer. And a consumer, again, has a more formal term called heterotrophs. And a heterotroph or a consumer is anything that eats or consumes an organism, or it might consume biotic waste to get its energy. So anything that eats something else. So you can think again of human beings. We are not capable of producing our own food, so we get our food from other organisms, whether it's plants or animals. That's how we get our energy. And this is the same for all species that are consumers. They must get their energy from something else. Well, if we are an organism that just eats producers, we call them herbivores. Plant eaters, now herbivores or primary consumers. Again, they mean the same thing. They only eat producers. When we say they only eat producers, that means they're only capable of eating producers. So a deer doesn't choose to eat grass. It's only capable of getting its energy from grass or plants. And the same can be said for any other primary consumer. It only eats producers. Well, some consumers can actually eat meat. They're carnivores or secondary consumers. And carnivores are organisms that eat other consumers. So again, it could be something like a praying mantis, could be a killer whale. It's going to eat something else that has eaten something. So killer whale eats salmon that has eaten phytoplankton. It's this whole process. Again, consumers don't choose to eat meat because they like it. They are able to break it down and get their energy. Now some species, and this is where human beings fall into, have the ability to eat both omnivores. They can get their energy, they consume both producers and consumers. And omnivores uh, have the ability to get their energy in both of those forms, aren't restricted to one over the other. Now the nutrients within an ecosystem will eventually work their way back to the producers, get back into the ecosystem from the producers. So carnivores, omnivores, or herbivores, primary or secondary consumers, will eventually transfer their nutrients back to producers. And how do those nutrients get back? Well, it comes from the detrivores and decomposers, the organisms that feed on waste material. 
And within an ecosystem, there are many different types of waste material. It could be dead bodies, organisms that have died, plant debris, branches, leaves, or yes, animal feces. Now, these detrivores, they get their nutrients from this waste material. And if we didn't have detrivores, we would have a lot of dead bodies, plant debris, and animal feces building up within an ecosystem. Now, some examples there, such as the earthworm in soil, or a crab in the ocean or water ecosystem, they break down these waste materials. And that's where they get their nutrients. That's essentially their food. Some organisms go one step further. And these are the organisms that break down the molecules in the waste. So that waste material may not be consumed by the detrivore, but broken down by the decomposer. They break it down into simpler molecules. Things like bacteria, fungi, they break down the waste into simpler molecules that can then be taken up by the producers. Within an ecosystem, the role of an organism is very, very important to keep that equilibrium going. We also may classify organisms as predators. And predators are consumers that capture and kill their prey, some other type of animal or some other type of organism. Now, we often think of predators as these big, dangerous mountain lions or tigers. But it could be something such as sea stars or centipedes, which really still do hunt down and prey on some other type of organism. Predators play a very important role in an ecosystem, but it's actually a complex cycle between both predator and prey. Predator eating prey. If the predators were to eat a lot of prey, eventually their numbers will actually reduce as well. This cycle can be demonstrated with a graph like so. So here is a graph of predator prey, just to give you an example. As our predator populations are low. Let's start down here. If the predator populations are low and the prey populations start here, if there's less predators, there's going to be more food. The prey are actually going to be able to reproduce and grow. Now, as they reproduce and grow at that same time, there's more food, so the predators will actually be able to reproduce and grow as well. As we get more predators, though, there's less food, the prey will actually go down. The predators will continue to grow and eventually there won't be enough food and the predator population will drop down. Now, if the predator population starts to drop down, then the amount of food will increase and we get this predator-prey cycle. Now, between the predator and prey is what's called the time lag. And the time lag is the time that it takes for the predator and prey numbers to catch each other. Now often this time lag is over a couple seasons. So maybe two years or three years. And this complex cycle between predator and prey again contributes to that dynamic and changing equilibrium within an ecosystem.